welcome to another episode of Little Acorns to Mighty Oaks. And if you're new here, let me start by introducing myself, your host, Nicole, Mama Nix. Yes, mother to six little acorns. Let me welcome you to our little village, little, not so little, but welcome to the village anyway. So on this channel, you'll find all things motherhood. So meal prep, life school, character development, relationship, all sorts of things. And so like, comment and subscribe. But yeah, before you even move on and continue watching, press that bell, subscribe. And then we're going to be discussing the importance of habits, good habits, bad habits, but the importance of having good habits, but especially in your morning routine, because the morning is what sets you up for your whole day. So um, without further ado, I don't want to keep you all long. I don't know. I don't want this video to be long, but we'll see. Um, let's, let's just get into it. So first of all, we need to examine our habits because our habits are discipling us whether we believe it or not or it's conscious or unconscious our habits make us and then we create these little people after that have our habits and then we're upset when they have these habits so before we even get upset before we get to that stage let's start by examining our habits what's working for us and what's not working for us like what lies do we tell ourselves when we get up in the morning what stories are we living in like first thing in the morning like do we get up and go on our phones and start scrolling do we get up and, and go to emails um do we you know get up and just get busy with the day like start oh i've got to get this person up got to make breakfast got to get to the dry cleaners i've got to do like how do we get up do we look at all the news headlines and get anxious and then you know fear and you know just just negative feelings because all of these things are lights lights on the pit of hell anyway and so we might as well use things that are going to help us, right? A coach of ours says that it's all lies anyway. Whatever you tell yourself, it's already, it's already a lie because it hasn't happened yet. So we might as well use something that's going to benefit us. Like there's no point in looking at the news headlines. There's no point in scrolling on social media because social media just helps you to be, uh, it helps you to keep comparing. And comparison is a thief of all joy. That means you won't be appreciative of what you actually have currently. If you're looking at the news headlines, you're going to have fear and anxiety at the start of your day. If you're looking at your to-do list straight away or your mind is already busy on that kind of stuff, you're just waking to the spirit of busyness. If you wait to emails, then you're just providing work, 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 work. For parents, I would suggest waking and praying, whether that be a five minute prayer, a 10 minute prayer, just taking some time to pray, thanking God for waking you up, asking for direction for the day, um, asking literally, what, what do you want me to do today? What is it? I have my to-do list, but what is it that you want me to do? The other thing I would suggest is scriptures before screens. So as I was saying before, you know, getting up, picking up your phone and just starting to scroll before that even happens i would suggest you know bible and i would suggest having a literal bible so then you don't get distracted by whatever's on your phone any alerts any notifications any oh let me just check no don't get distracted spend the time intentional time in the scripture and the third thing i'll suggest is creating a meaningful family time now when i say meaningful family time i don't mean like it has to be one hour long of devotions or anything like that but creating a spiritual rhythm for your family in the morning whether it means it's around the table whether it is um like in the so what our children tend to do is they wake up and then they all come into our room and they're all on our bed and all over the place and whatever so we can utilize that time depending on how early it is we can utilize that time as our time together as a family we pray we read um the scriptures do a devotional um at the moment we're reading through samuel <clears throat> we've just read through um ruth and then we're on to samuel so we'll just take a portion of that go through that and explain it and just you know just discuss it a bit we've done prayer we might sing a couple songs but be intentional about the time and also be intentional about the time um be intentional about where you are in your family like if you've got lots of little children you can't have a long family time um but if you've if you 
and then you might want to do singing with them because that will keep them more active and you know it's a bit more interactive for them like singing or musical instruments or something like that but when it when you have older ones you can sit and you can talk and discuss they can journal they can write um but you have to be intentional about it but you also need to be re very realistic about where you are in your journey like what your family circumstances are um you're not like anybody else every family is individual and unique and so what you see us do you might not be able to do all of those things and what you guys are doing i might not be able to do all of those things because all of our children are different all of our family setups are different and so we have to take that into consideration otherwise we will go crazy and it's again that comparison which is the thief of all joy and if we can continue to compare ourselves to other families what they're doing what they're doing then we're always going to forget we're going to lose what we actually have like the blessing of what we have we're going to be ungrateful for what we actually do have another thing about gathering as a family it doesn't have to be long like i said before it could be around the table while you're eating it could just be around the table before you leave the house it could be at the door before you leave the house that's another thing that we do we have our morning time together but before daddy leaves for work or whoever leaves the house first generally daddy the little girl momo she would say daddy we didn't pray so we have to all gather before daddy leaves and we'll pray as a family and sometimes the boys might cover daddy like they'll pray for daddy as well before he leaves the house but start with some kind of spiritual rhythm start small don't try and take on everything because then you get overwhelmed and it's too much and then you feel like i'm a failure and i can't do it why don't i do it everybody else is doing it and i can't do it and all that kind of stuff we don't need any of that Number one will be to get an alarm clock to make it separate from your phone so you don't have the temptation of scrolling or notifications or whatever it is that you do on your phone. Now, if you can't get another thing, uh, get, if you don't have an alarm clock, then maybe having do not disturb on your phone or I don't know, there's, there's stuff that you can do in it where you just, you just learn to just not use the phone, I guess. Number one is an alarm clock. Number two, putting your phone on do not disturb. Um, and number three would be to find a place that you go as your as a parent, not necessarily as the whole family, but as you, as the individual, that you go to to do your reading and your journaling and your praying. Um, so it might be like a chair that you go to, or you go and sit downstairs at the table, or I don't know, somewhere that you go and not just be... I don't know, just try and make it a bit different so you can create a new habit. Um, also, one of the good things about going somewhere else is that when the children wake up, that they see you, that they end up actually catching you in your word. And that's always a good thing because they need to create those habits. They need to remember that mummy was in her word, like daddy was in his word. Like, I always remember that. And they catch you doing these right things like success is this is success like when they can see what it is that you do then they can learn to do the same thing um number four would be start small um pick something not everything just pick something and start number five would be find some accountability so if you have your husband at home then and and you can use him as accountability then then tell him i'm going to start this new thing um i want to start doing my devotions i want to start doing a family family time in the morning um and yeah just be accountable and if you can't use your spouse if you don't have a spouse or whatever it might be then find someone find your friend this is where your village comes in and they can help you to remain accountable also um, if you're finding it hard then maybe you can even utilize your village to do the study with like someone that you can call and do the study with or talk about the study with after after you've done it that's where accountability comes in my number one thing out of all of the things i've said is to just start you don't have to pick everything just pick one thing and start you'll be surprised about what God can do with that little thing, that faithfulness to just start and don't be distracted by the distraction that comes, that follows that intention to, you know, to have an amazing family culture, to have an amazing morning routine, you know, because it's going to happen. The baby's going to wake up, 
someone's going to be sick, the alarm's not going to go off, something's going to happen to disrupt that morning routine. But don't be discouraged. Keep pushing because on the other side of that disruption is the change, is the beauty, is the amazing thing that you want. So keep pushing. With that being said, I hope that this video was helpful. And in the meantime, stay blessed and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.